there are certain rules to tunnel warfare. Don't turn on the light unless you're really, really, really sure you're alone. Um, use your senses. Do your first killing as quietly as you can. That means don't shoot. What you just heard is Vietnam War veteran James Gillum listing three essential tips for surviving a Viet Cong tunnel. And although you may not believe it, the communist guerrillas built a gigantic network of underground passages. Not every soldier dared to go in there, but those who did knew that it was likely that they would not come out alive. For Americans, fighting in the darkness of galleries became commonplace. Throughout the war, both sides became accustomed to all kinds of atrocities to achieve victory. In order to exterminate the enemy, they were capable of going to unimaginable extremes. Today, in this new episode of Military History, we will show you five disturbing practices that ended up becoming normal during the Vietnam War. Number one, violence against children. According to specialists, the number of Vietnamese killed during the war amounts to 882,000. This is a monstrous figure that is equivalent to, for example, the population of the city of San Francisco in the United States. And as if this fact were not scary enough, keep in mind that of that total, about 84,000 were minors. The Viet Cong did not wear a military uniform, so there was no way to differentiate them from ordinary civilians who were not involved in the conflict. To the Americans, this meant that everyone in Vietnam, regardless of age or sex, was a suspect. Even the most innocent child could be an undercover guerrilla, waiting for the right moment to shoot them in the back. When an American patrol unit arrived at a village, the first thing they did was inspect it, house by house, to make sure they did not have weapons or secret messages. During these missions, it was common for soldiers to lose control and unleash a bloodbath, massacring villagers until no one was left alive. Infants were torn from their mother's arms and shot at point-blank range or abandoned inside burning huts. Sometimes the troops threw grenades at the places where the children were taking refuge, who, petrified by what was happening around them, were unable to escape. Although the massacres of civilians led to the deaths of thousands of children, many others perished during the aerial bombardments. The planes had the mission of destroying a strategic location that had been previously selected by the Army's high command. The commanders were not interested in knowing how many people would be blown to pieces by the bombs. Laziness also affected the aircraft pilots, who considered that they were only doing their job and ignored the consequences of their actions. Meanwhile, on the ground, there were humans desperately fleeing the explosions, watching as their friends and family were left behind, lost forever in the fire and smoke. She is probably the most famous survivor of the Vietnam bombing. On June 8, 1972, when she was nine years old, a squadron of South Vietnamese planes attacked the town where she was staying. Hearing the noise of the aircraft flying over her building, she and her family fled and ran down a road. Let's listen to her tell us what happened next. I saw the airplane and it's so loud, so close to me. Suddenly, the fire everywhere around me. The fire burned off my clothes and I saw my arm got burned with the fire. I thought, oh my goodness, I get burned People will see me different way. In the midst of her suffering, she was photographed by a Vietnamese journalist. The image would end up circulating around the world and becoming an iconic portrait of the horrors of war. As for Kim, two thirds of her body was burned in the bombing, but fortunately she was rescued and taken to a hospital. Her two cousins, aged nine months and three years, died in the attack. In the following decades, she had to deal with the physical and psychological consequences of the bombing and even considered the possibility of <laughs> Over time, she decided to dedicate her life to helping child victims of war conflicts so that no one would experience pain similar to hers. Not only the United States committed acts of violence against children. Throughout the war, 
there were hundreds of boys who were born as a result of the union between North American troops and local women. Vietnamese society treated these boys as outcasts for being children of the invaders. They were seen as a mark of shame and humiliation imposed by the West. They were so despised that in 1975, the Viet Cong made it known that they would put any young man of American descent to death. Faced with this, Uncle Sam responded with Operation Babylift, a military maneuver to rescue and evacuate 3,000 miners and take them safely out of Vietnam. If this operation had not been launched, the children would have been executed without mercy. Number two, wage war on the climate. During the Vietnam War, the United States used all its technological advances to put an end to the Viet Cong. One of his most outlandish and least known strategies to defeat communism was 1967's Operation Popeye, a weather manipulation project to generate artificial rain. To understand the reason why the Americans launched this operation, we have to know the complex supply system of the guerrillas. To obtain food, drink, clothing, and ammunition, the Viet Cong trafficked supplies through the famous Ho Chi Minh Trail. This was a set of narrow trails that ran for 16,000 kilometers, crossing North and South Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos. The terrain was so rugged and sharp that the Americans could not navigate it easily. Their trucks got lost among the trails or became stranded among the trees. For a Westerner, traveling there was an almost impossible task. The only ones who could move comfortably on the route were the guerrillas. Viet Cong troops were transported on bicycles, each loaded with up to half a ton of supplies, and pedaled hundreds of kilometers to deliver them to the battlefront. Operation Popeye involved the use of aircraft to create artificial clouds over the Ho Chi Minh Trail. To do this, they had to sprinkle the sky with chemicals such as lead iodide and silver iodide. This generated thick clouds that, during the monsoon season, dumped particularly intense rain. To give you an idea of how dangerous this could be, take a look at what a natural downpour is like in Vietnam. Now imagine if this monsoon lasted for two and a half months uninterrupted. That's what Operation Popeye did. By producing artificial rainfall with such force, the roads used by the communists were ruined. They could not be crossed because of the mud. And on the other hand, some paths were directly converted into impassable rivers. With this, the aim was to destroy the Viet Cong supplies and lead their troops to suffer a ferocious famine. Although the operation put the guerrillas in trouble, it did not put an end to the supply system. The project was kept under strict secrecy for years and the North American government always refused to recognize its existence for fear that it would generate rejection in the scientific field. Popeye continued operating until 1971 when a journalist divulged information about the operation and generated a scandal in public opinion. The United States then ceased activities and two years later, passed laws in Congress prohibiting the manipulation of the climate to wage war. Number three, the use of lethal chemicals. During the war, the Americans carried out a biological warfare program that was on the verge of destroying the country and dooming future generations of its inhabitants. For the Viet Cong, the jungle was a place where they could hide and prepare ambushes for American troops. For this reason, Uncle Sam urgently needed to destroy the jungle. The solution came in the form of Agent Orange, a herbicidal chemical with which they poisoned thousands of hectares of jungle and annihilated the vegetation. Although similar substances already existed, such as the white, blue, green, and purple agents, Orange had the distinction of being the most powerful and the one with the greatest capacity for destruction. It was called that because of the color of the barrels where it was transported. The U.S. Army released approximately 80 million liters of this chemical, sealing the fate of the Vietnamese flora and fauna once and for all. Here you can see images of the planes in action.
It is important to note that it was not only dumped in uninhabited areas, but was also used in the fields of farmers who were suspected of providing shelter to the Viet Cong. Agent Orange left terrible consequences on human beings, such as skin irritations, diabetes, prostate cancer and leukemia. Although those affected were usually on the communist side, Americans who came into contact with the chemical also suffered its consequences. In total, it is estimated that about 3 million people were affected by it. The international controversy caused by the use of this substance led the United States to grant pensions to war veterans who had been harmed by the chemical. In any case, there was no kind of financial aid for the Vietnamese whose lives were ruined by Agent Orange. The persistence of the toxin in the environment is such that, even today, babies continue to be born with genetic malformations. Despite all the damage the chemical caused, there is no indication that those responsible for its application will pay for this catastrophe. Number 4. Snake Traps The jungle of Vietnam is full of dangerous creatures, but none of them are as terrifying as the snake. They wait curled up in the branches of the trees, camouflaged among the leaves, waiting for some unwary person to get close enough to take a bite. As you can imagine, those most likely to suffer snake attacks during the war were the American soldiers patrolling the terrain. Most had spent their entire lives in the United States and had never set foot in a jungle, so they were not familiar with the habitat or its fauna. Throughout the war, between 25 and 50 Americans died each year from snake bites. There was one species of reptile that was particularly deadly. It was the bamboo viper, a creature of a hypnotic green color with the ability to annihilate its prey with great ease. Let's see her at the exact moment when she catches a rat. The Americans were terrified of it because its poison could kill a person in a short period of time. Needless to say, the Viet Cong knew perfectly well the properties of the animal, which is why they used it to design some of their most lethal traps. The procedure was as simple as it was effective and consisted of immobilizing the viper and hanging it from the ceilings of its hiding places. When an American soldier entered the lair and began inspecting it for explosives or hidden enemies, he would sooner or later come across the reptile. Then, the viper would slowly descend on him, wrap itself around his neck and sink its teeth violently. The poor man would end up like the rat we saw before. His fate was sealed. Number 5. Tunnel Rats One of the most amazing tactics of the Viet Cong was the gigantic network of underground tunnels they built and used as a base of operations. The guerrillas used it to live, store supplies and weapons, and also to hide after carrying out a surprise attack on the Americans. The network extended for hundreds of kilometers and covered dozens of districts throughout the country. Living inside was a real torment. The atmosphere was suffocating. The air did not circulate and stagnated. Food rotted easily and was filled with insects. Obviously, the sunlight did not reach there, so they lived in a state of permanent darkness, barely illuminated by a candle. The communists defended the tunnels tooth and nail, since they had immense strategic value. They could not fight the Americans in the open field, since Uncle Sam's military superiority was undeniable. On the other hand, they could fight it through a guerrilla warfare tactic from the underground network. The entrances to the tunnels were camouflaged with leaves and dirt, so the Americans could not find them. When they did, it was not easy to dislodge the Viet Cong from their hiding places either, as this meant going inside and fighting in the dark. The galleries were narrow and claustrophobic and filled with deadly traps, such as explosive mines or bamboo stakes. To deal with the tunnels, the United States Army created special military units whose objective was to infiltrate underground networks, kill enemies, and obtain secret documentation that they could keep there. The soldiers chosen for this task were those with the smallest physical build, since they were the ones who could move most easily within the narrow passages. For this reason, these exploration units were nicknamed Tunnel Rats. 
They had to move carefully through the galleries because at any moment, they could activate a trap or be attacked by a hidden gorilla. The communists used to hide in the recesses of the tunnels, camouflaged with makeup and protected in the shadows. As soon as they saw an American, they would rush at him to strangle him with their hands or stab him stealthily, killing him without making a sound. Let's listen back to James Gillum, who we met at the beginning of this video, tell us about his ordeal in a tunnel. I chased somebody into a tunnel, met them at a bend in the corner in the dark. I thought I was alone and then I smelled their breath. And we had a wrestling match in the dark and I got the upper hand and crushed this person's trachea, held him down while he died, and then got out. I beat and strangled someone to death in a tunnel, in the dark. The soldier we just heard had the nerves of steel to kill a man and escape with his mind intact. Others, however, were not so lucky. They suffered panic attacks and cried out to please be taken out of there. A large number of these troops died in the fulfillment of their missions within the passages. The rats were not very effective in clearing enemy tunnels, so the army decided to bomb them with delayed action explosives. Thus, around 1969, the underground networks were completely destroyed. As you can see, the Vietnam War was one of the savage wars in history. The tactics the Americans and Viet Cong used to win never ceased to amaze us. What we saw today are just some of them, but we still have many others to discover. We reached the end of the video and we want to ask you, what do you think about the use of Agent Orange in the jungles of Vietnam? Leave us your answer in the comments box below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history.